nutrition. What are the most valuable things that get you your results? So if I had a bar graph and I had zero to 100% and I said, I'm gonna fill up everything that gets me most successful. So if I had to pick things for people to do that would give them the most success in their diet and get them the outcome that they want. I didn't make these up, these are like real numbers. 5% is supplementation. So that's like when people say, I'm gonna go on a diet, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the supplement store and I'm gonna load up on protein, fish oil, magnesium. Uh, there, there's nothing wrong with that stuff. You can't say stuff's bad. I'm, oh, we've got protein here. I'm not telling you that that's what's bad. I'm saying that people spend $300 at GNC and then wanna cut the grocery budget. And you need to be looking at real food. Just the fact that you take a protein shake, just the fact that you take your vitamins or whatever, they're good, but the chance of you actually reaching your goal goes up about 5% if that's the only thing that you do. Another 5%, oh, that's a 50. Another 5% is the food quality. So a lot of times we'll hear this. I don't eat much, but when I eat, I eat well. When I eat, I eat all organic. Great, I am definitely telling you that you don't need to eat Pop-Tarts. I am definitely telling you that there's a big difference between free range, organic, well-fed food and not, definitely a difference. But that tells you nothing, that tells you nothing. You can go get all the Ezekiel bread you want and that is still pounded with carbohydrates. Most gluten-free options can actually contain more carbohydrates than non-gluten-free options. Does that mean gluten-free is bad? No, it just means that if you look at that and you say it's gluten-free, I'm just using gluten as an example, definitely don't mean that it's calorie-free. And we gotta look at that and we gotta say, okay, if I only look at my food quality and that's all I did, about 5%, 10% is gonna be based on meal timing. So that'll be like eating every three hours. We see that all the time. The issue we run into with that is that on average, the average American eats 60% carbohydrates. So typically people that eat every three hours are at a higher risk for type two diabetes and insulin resistance and midsection weight gain because what they're eating is pounded with carbohydrates. We're told that a healthy breakfast, you're not told, but I mean when you're shown it, you're told is Cereal, orange juice, milk, and a banana, and muffins, and bagels, and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, I'm eating every three hours, but literally speaking, I'm just pounding carbs and sugar every three hours is what I'm doing. So then we have this big 80% gap. 80% of the things that make you successful in your diet are volume and macro, so the type. So how much I'm eating and what I'm eating of it. So volume that you take in, split between your macronutrients, which are carbs, fat, and protein, overrules 80% of your dietary success. Meaning that somebody eating an appropriate volume, and we're gonna break this down in a second, would see a higher chance of success, whether that's lose weight, gain muscle, whatever, than somebody not taking in the adequate amount of volume, taking supplements, eating every three hours and eating organic. Not that any of that's really bad, but they definitely didn't meet the minimum. So here's what it looks like, is that there's two categories.